it's March and we're out in beefcake already. Yay! Actually, I took it out in February and I put a full tank in, which I'll probably regret later in this video. Um, however, today we're going to do a little brake test. So uh, it's completely and utterly unscientific, um, but I'm going to get to 60 miles an hour, put my foot on the brake as hard as I can and see how quick the car stops. Um, the reason is I want a kind of a baseline to see how quickly it's stopping because as of tomorrow we're starting a new project on this car which is fitting servo assisted braking. So we're going to fit a remote brake servo at the front of the car um, and hopefully it's going to make a decent improvement on the, the brake setup. Um, so I'll explain what brakes we've got on it at the minute, what we've done, when, it, when it's all together show you how we've done it um, and then at the end we can tick out again and hopefully do some kind of comparison to how it improves the braking, if at all, hopefully it will. Um, I say my father's insisted on doing this together, so that'd be kind of nice. I've not done a father some projects on this car for quite some time now, so kind of looking forward to it. Um, the only problem is it'll make him look like a chimpanzee waving sticks around because he's so much better on the tools than I am. But I'm sure he'll be fine. Let's do it. Hi. Hello. <laughs> 60 miles an hour to zero in about four seconds i don't think it's too bad actually um but i don't know how that compares to stock so if anyone's actually tried that um i'd love to know so if you wouldn't mind posting it in the comments that would be really appreciated but i think we can improve on it There's probably already a load of people screaming at the screen saying brake servos don't improve your brakes. And you're kind of right, I guess. Um, so the brake servo basically means you have to apply less pressure through your pedal um, for the same given force that is transmitted to your brakes. Um, but the problem I've got with this bug is it doesn't matter how hard I press those brake, that brake pedal, it doesn't lock up. So I'm pressing it so hard I feel like I'm going to bend something and break something. Um, and it only just kind of starts to lock, I guess. Um, so I think if I have the ability to put more force through that pedal by having a servo aid me, um, I should be able to put more pressure to those um, brake calipers and ultimately um, stop the wheels from turning a little bit better. Um, so that's why I think a brake servo is going to work well for me. So why did we go the brake servo route? Well, first of all, cost. Um, so a cost of a set of Wilwood discs, which I'm not knocking in any way, and it may be something I do in the future. Um, you're looking at about 1200 quid, which is a lot of money. Um, and this is less than half of that. Secondly, where is the fun in that? Yes, I could save some money and blow it on brakes, but I've not seen this done before. And I like to do things that are a little bit unique and try new stuff. Um, I say I've heard about a guy who's done th something similar um, locally, but his bug is even more crazy than mine. Um, it's actually based on an Audi R8 and I'm hoping we're going to get to do a video with him at some point in the future. Um, so he did it and he said it worked well for him so I don't see why with my setup it wouldn't help me improve mine as well. And like I say, it's unique. I've not seen it done before so let's give it a try. And lastly, because the brake setup on this bug is not standard, let me explain. The back of my bug has been converted to independent rear suspension or IRS um, that was taken from an early Porsche 944, so the one with the steel arms which keeps your track a little bit narrower. Um, as part of that conversion you get the rear disc brakes um, and my bug has the early single pot caliper on there. On the front I have standard late beetle discs, albeit converted to five studs so I can fit the Porsche wheels. Attached to this is a Talbot Horizon caliper. Now I'm not sure what size pistons in that caliper, I'm not sure what the rears are actually, um, but the pads within this caliper are actually the same size as the Porsche ones on the rear and that's a significant increase in size over stock pads. Um, I did do a video on this very eleven channel which I'll link to above and probably at the end of the video if you want to see the size comparison between the different pads um, and also on the uh, Talbot conversion. It's also worth noting that on the front I have 185 wide tyres, uh, the mid-budget Kumos, um, but I'll be honest I've been quite impressed so far by their performance. And on the rear I have 225 wide super sticky semi-slick Yokohamas. Now these are quite an expensive tyre and I put them on there so I've got the best traction off the line uh, for drag racing and stuff. Might want to avoid them if you're planning to drive in the rain a lot, um, but clearly front to back I've got quite a lot of rubber on the ground. Is this a mod you should fit to any old Beetle? No, probably not. Um, so if you've got a stock bug with stock tyres um, or not far from there and you've got decent setup brakes, um, then you should probably be able to lock your front brakes up. Um, there's not a lot of weight on the front of the bugs um, and they are kind of known for the fronts locking first. Um, but say we're going to get into all the brake bias and stuff in a bit in the video. But as a standard setup, I don't think this is right for you. If you've got something a bit more crazy, you might want to consider it, but we'll see how it goes. 
Ooh, shiny. So we've got to find a home for the new vacuum can. Um, ideally it will go here on the dashboard, but I've got a squirrel fan here which keeps me nice and cool in the summer. Um, now we've got this thing in the middle which fitted um, and the flow rate was nowhere near enough uh, for this engine and it just exploded the water everywhere. So it's just been sat there defunct ever since. So this is going to come out and I think we're going to have to fit it here in between the fuel tank and the fuse board. The servo is going to be mounted in the boot and it has to be mounted in this plane so you've got the two bleed nipples there which have to point up uh, so you can effectively bleed it once it's installed. Now you can actually buy this bracket as we did um, when you buy the servo and it's not exactly cheap but it doesn't work for a beetle. Um, so this is actually made for hanging and obviously we're going to be mounting it to the, the boot floor. So ideally it wants to go on something like that but then the, uh, the blades are upside down and it's not going to work. Um, so what you may want to do is not buy this but you need to make something that basically fits the same way but on the underside so it has to raise off the ground so you've got the pipe and that clears um, but what we've actually done we've chosen to use the original bracket that we uh, we bought with the servo and we're building a bracket that goes over the top of it so it's still hanging but on a, on a bracket which sits on the the boot floor <laughs> no 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 <laughs> A bit of fun siphoning tanks. Tank out. That is definitely a prettier solution. So anyone who watched the channel know I've got a Subaru engine and coming off the back of the manifold at number one is this old chunky pipe which I never actually removed. I, I just capped it off and it's been sat there um, since we did the conversion. Um, this I believe is a vacuum pipe uh, we just started it up and tested it and it's sucking nice and healthily um, so that's what we're going to use as our feed for the the vacuum line to feed the vacuum from the engine to the servo we're using an old t25 vacuum line now this is one i removed from the van i'm hoping it's going to be strong enough and not going to compress under uh, under the pressure i think it should be okay if not you can actually buy a um, proper vacuum line but it costs a small fortune so i'm reusing stuff where i can just by chance the bends that are on this from the van are pretty much perfect for uh, the way it feeds through the car so uh, I'm quite happy with the way it's installed um, it's just making sure that it uh, is up to the job I guess. Under the dash and my pipes coming through under the dash at the side of the A pillar um, so my wires aren't in standard location um, so they don't go through the channel at the bottom so they're going down the A pillar um, along the side of the seat and to the engine bay in a nice sheath um, and the new pipes actually follow that quite nicely um, so that's where I'm going to be running it um, it's coming in two sections because it comes in two sections on the van and once we've got the length sorted at the front we're just going to chop it down um, and clamp it to the side of the wires and we should have a nice out of the way vacuum hose through the car. Now we're not fully installed so some of the pipes still need hooking up but I wanted to show you the master cylinder before it gets covered. Um, this is a Porsche 944 master cylinder. Um, it's pretty much a straight swap for a bug one um, and we did this because of the rear brakes which obviously are 944 um, on the back of the car. Um, it's pretty similar to the bug one. Um, the major difference is you have two outputs for the front wheels. So you've got a left and a right front um, and you have a single um, output for the rears. Um, because of that the uh, switch is not actually located on the master cylinder and it's in a T-piece as part of the rear brake line so my brake lights work. Now if you were going to be doing this mod you'd actually probably be better off with the bug one. Um, the reason being is the servos only have one input and one output and having two front lines makes that a little bit more complicated. So in actual fact, we've had to put our two lines into a T-piece, so how it goes back to a single line. Um, so I'm not sure how that will actually work. I don't think it'll be a problem, but I guess we'll soon see. Um, but if you had a bug one, you just literally you'd be connecting one output for your front to the one side of the, the servo, and your output for the rear to the other side of the servo. So it would be an easier job to do. Brake pipe fittings. So the standard Beetle ones are metric 10 mil, like the ones in this uh, little straight piece here. Um, but most of the fittings on the servos that I've seen um, are all 3.8 UNF, which is the old English car um, imperial size. So you're going to need to get different end, end pieces, different um, brake pipe nuts uh, to do this job. Brake bias valves. Now because I was concerned about um, over braking on the front of the car, um, I wanted to fit a bias valve in line with the front brakes so I could reduce the amount of pressure to the front brakes should they start locking up um, a lot too early. 
Um, unfortunately, it's turned out to be a complete waste of time and money. Um, so I got this one initially, and we plumbed it into the front brake line. So it was originally here, uh, plumbed in. And when we came to bleed it, it didn't bleed. We couldn't get any, any oil to actually come out of the switch itself. Um, so I thought that was faulty, ordered another one. Um, and we had the same problem. The switch here, um, it sees pressure in the line and it doesn't allow the servo to put any oil through to that particular line. I don't know why that is. I don't know why a servo in line would be any different to having a brake caliper in line, but it didn't work and they told us it wouldn't work after we phoned them up. Uh, what they did suggest is you could try putting it on the other side of the servo. So what we ended up doing was switching the whole servo around um, to see if it would make any difference and it basically didn't. Fire valve has now been replaced by a straight connector um, so we're using it without one. If however you're wanting to fit a brake bias valve and you don't have a servo like us, you don't have that issue, um, then you need to consider carefully. So the first one arrived with these fittings, um, which are 8 inch MPT, and they need a double flare to connect to it if you're making your own pipes up. The problem is this fitting is useless for that because there's not enough thread in the end of it to adapt to something else. So I ended up having to buy more fittings um, to go into the end of this one, um, and they cost more than the actual bias valve in the first place so between that and the fittings there's about 40 odd quids with there and i can't use it and i've got a second one as well so roll up rope if anyone wants to buy a bias valve i've got two for sale um also you have to convert from 8th inch mpt to another 8th inch mpt then to something else so it gets a little bit complicated in the, in the old classics so just bear that in mind Right, we are back. Now, it's been actually a few weeks since I was last filming here. Um, everything's pretty much done. Um, had a bit of a nightmare with the bleeding, so I've already mentioned the issue we had with the brake bias valve. Um, but on top of that, because we've taken the pipes off so many times to switch it around and switch it back and all the rest of it, and probably because I over-tighten um, all the nuts, um, we actually ended up crushing or over-crushing the end of a lot of the pipes we've made. Um, so then they leaked because uh, they were bottoming, them out, bottoming out on the nut before it actually sealed. Um, as a consequence, I had to take a lot of the pipes off, cut the, the ends off them, and then re, um, remake them. Um, and that means they're not quite as neat as they originally were, which is kind of a shame, um, but it still looks pretty decent, to be honest. Um, but it's all there. Um, I've fitted a new bottle, which I'll show you in a second, um, and we've got a new water bottle as well. Um, so things are moving forwards. So I'll just quickly show you up close where we've got to, and then we'll put the tank back in, and hopefully um, we're able to fire it up and have a working brake server. So the master cylinder is all plumbed up. Um, getting these pipes in at the side between the tunnel and the, uh, the master cylinder is an absolute nightmare. I say trying to get a bend in there and then get the nuts in is, uh, is a real fight, but we managed to get there in the end. I've uh, got the two feeds for the front which go to the T-piece and then up to the um, servo and then back down again and then they go back to the T-piece to the front. So hopefully that's the solution that's going to work for us. The other is more simple, it's just a rear which goes up to the other side and back down again and then to the back of the car. Um, these lines here are the uh, feed from the reservoir, uh, which now go up to here. Um, so I build a, made a little bracket, so I've got a second bottle on there, which is higher than the servo, as we've been told it should be. Um, so that should hopefully uh, feed our brake servo, and the lower one is now the clutch. Uh, so I switched them around position-wise. Um, I've got the feed there for the vacuum. Uh, we've got a check valve uh, installed in that, which I bought online. So I'll try and put a link in the description to that. It's relatively inexpensive, um, but rather than reusing old T25 stuff, I just went for a new one on that. So it's hopefully working as it should be. The vacuum pipe now follows my loom to the back of the car. Hopefully we're not going to have trouble with these pipes on the, uh, the outlet for the fuel tank. It is pretty close and the outlet on my tank is not standard because um, we fitted a bigger outlet, an 8mm outlet for the uh, Subaru engine. Um, but so yeah, we'll get the tank in and I guess we'll soon find out. I need to replace this horrible destroyed rubber anyway, so that might give me a, a fraction of an inch or two um, extra height on the tank at least. And worst case scenario, I could always raise the tank up um, just a little bit just to clear uh, anything that's down there. Just used some of this stuff, which was actually a sand insulation in one of my vans. It's a kind of a plastic foam. Um, I've cut it down, and we have a new seal for the fuel tank. Hopefully, it won't transmit water, uh, and we'll stand up to the pressure or the uh, the weight of the fuel in the tank. Right, we are all back together again. Um, so I just jumped in, started it up. Uh, we did test. We got a vacuum first, which we do. Um, and my foot went straight to the floor. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing there at all. Um, so the full system has been bled using an easy bleed, so a pressurized kit. 
Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't seem to bleed this system. I'm not sure why, because I did do it on all four corners and at the servo. Um, so just re-bled it manually using the foot down, open up, uh, close it up, and then foot up technique, the old-fashioned one. Um, we just did it at the servo, pumped a load of air out, which must have been in the master cylinder still. Um, and we've now got a nice firm brake. So, let me give it a try. So first drive, just gone for the MOT, we're going to pass, awesome stuff, so we're back on the road. Um, I've been really gentle with the brakes, wanted to get used to them before I tried to do anything silly. Um, and so far they feel pretty good, I'll be honest with you. So the, before the, the servo, you had about an inch of travel um, before it went firm and then you were, say, pressing hard to, to make it stop. Now there's a little bit more travel actually before you get to that firmer point, so it's probably about two, maybe three inches travel, which is a bit too much. Um, part of that is because if you can see that first inch of travel in the pedal before it even activates the master cylinder, um, so I need to lengthen the, the push rod just to take that first bit of slack out. Once you get to the, uh, the hard first point, you've got about that much travel. So it's about two inches, I think, which is more than it used to be. So it might take a little bit of getting used to. But um, say once you get to that point, it's, uh, it's full on braking. That's better taking most of that movement out. Now, weirdly, most of the movement is actually in the pin that goes through the push rod. Um, so I'm not sure if that's because we've used this different push rod from the 944, I, I don't actually know, I can't remember. Uh, but mainly to look at sleeve and that, just to take that little bit of free play out. out for a buzz in the country and the brakes feel pretty good i like them a lot now the the first press when you're using it quite gentle it feels pretty similar to stock um so when you're pressing nice and gentle just to slow down a little bit it doesn't feel much different it really doesn't um but when you go past that kind of firm point the brakes kick in <laughs> um and i'd probably guess it's pressing it feels like it's pressing like twice as hard as it did before if that makes sense um, so yeah, it does uh, the kicking fast, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, I must say. Um, I've been over braking a little bit occasionally, uh, more than I wanted to, but I'm starting to feather it in and, and get used to it. Um, I haven't, however, tried a full-on test yet, so we're just heading back to where we did the test the first time. Um, I'll do a quick pre-test and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, they feel good. I didn't lock up. I didn't actually press it all the way down either. <laughs> yeah, pretty happy. Let's go and do a brake test. See if we can do it without skidding, uh, and see how fast we can get down to zero. Ow. So there we have it, one brake servo upgrade for a VW Bug, and I'm really happy. Um, so that it feels more like a modern car now to brake. Um, so it's similar to the, uh, the 25, I guess, in that sense, uh, and more modern stuff like my RAV, which is 20 years old, but <laughs> all the same, it's modern to me. Um, so yeah, really, really happy. And uh, clearly I've got a lot more braking ability. I can lock up those fronts, so I'm gonna have to be careful uh, and just get used to it on the on hard braking situations. And when we did the test where the, the second test spot where it had been raining and it was wet, it locked up really, really quick there. So again, I'm going to have to be really careful and get used to it, especially in the wet. Um, but in terms of uh, an upgrade, yeah, pretty happy with this one. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my father for his help with this one. So cheers, Dad. Um, and as I say I will put links and stuff in the de description below. If you've got this far and you're not subscribed, you're not like the video, please click like and subscribe. Uh, so it really helps me out with growing the channel um, and say uh, I can do more and more interesting things if I can get some more subscribers and uh, some more views. So thank you very much for today. Take care. Bye bye.